Hey, welcome to Luxury and Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Joanne, and every week I upload videos about luxury handbags and other lifestyle products to hopefully give you some really good tips or if you're just curious about these topics. So if you like what you hear, please consider subscribing below and joining me on my luxury journey. Today we have a really fun tag video, which is the five ultimate luxury dream bag video. So this tag was created by Always Antoinette, and I was tagged by her as well as the lovely Angeline. So thank you girls for tagging me. I'll leave their videos below. And basically, I'm going to pick five bags which are on my dream list. And this could be anything from something that's on my wish list to a collection that's already come out and I just didn't get my hands on it. So I'm going to choose some bags that are just a touch unrealistic or impractical for me, but I love them, I adore them, and let's get started. So the very first bag was very easy for me to pick, which is the Hermes Birkin in a size 30. So like many of us, the Hermes bags are like the ultimate dream bag. And I haven't um, been an Hermes shopper for a long time. I actually didn't know if I even wanted a Kelly or Birkin for a while, um, just because my mom has one of each and her Birkin is really big and heavy. So I never thought I would want to carry around something like that. But after learning more about the bags, learning more about the brand and also getting my first um, Hermes bag, which is the garden party you see right here. I can tell that the bag is absolutely gorgeous. The leathers used are very beautiful. And also just having more experience with bags now with the Chanel classic flap or like this tote bag. I now understand that I don't love the flat bag style as much. So I like having easy access. So for me, um, I would appreciate a Birkin more than a Kelly because the construction is actually more similar to the Garden Party tote. So there's two handles. You can leave the opening wide open, so easy access in and out. Whereas with the Kelly, you actually do have the flap that goes over. Um, and I don't think I would want to fumble with that, even though it does come with a shoulder strap. I think um, now that I understand my bag preferences, I think that I would want a Birkin. And then in terms of size, like I mentioned, I wouldn't want anything too big because most of them are all leather and that of course makes it very, very heavy. But at the same time, I don't want it to be too small because I do like carrying around a lot of things with me. I do like carrying bags on the crook of my arm, so maybe like a size 25 would be too little. So, so far, that's all I know. That's on my wish list. Uh, Birkin 30. I'm pretty open to colors. I don't wear a lot of like green and yellow, but other than that, I think I would be pretty open. So, let's just leave it at that. So, then the second bag that is a dream bag of mine is a bag that I have been thinking about and lusting after for like 10 years now. And that would be a bag in the Louis Vuitton watercolor canvas. So I believe the watercolor canvas came out um, when I was still in college or something a while ago. And of course I couldn't afford it then, um, but I just loved how it looked. It just was very romantic to me and it was like pink and gold. And obviously those are very girly colors that I appreciate. More recently, um, since I'm always thinking about that and like that was like a dream bag of mine, I actually looked on the secondhand market and I didn't realize this at the time because I wasn't researching bags so much, but they only came out with that canvas in a couple of different bag styles. So for example, there was a Speedy with that canvas. Um, and a couple of other smaller bag styles, but they didn't come out with like a Neverfull in that canvas or a whole bunch of different styles. So really there's very few options. And there was actually a Speedy in the watercolor canvas on eBay. And it was of course going above what was retail because you know, now it's a rare bag. It's kind of like, you know, people are willing to pay more for it. But for me, I like couldn't pull the trigger yet. And I don't know if it's still listed or not, 
but it did seem very expensive to me. I think it was like 4,000, which is, you know, like 2,000 or more over retail. And also, I don't think that I would enjoy a Speedy very much, just because the combination of the one zipper on top and the big, you know, kind of black hole that you have with the Speedy silhouette, it's kind of hard, even if you put in a bag organizer, which I don't love to do, um, that one zipper on top kind of makes it hard to get in and out of still because the top, you know, kind of folds over like the speedy shape and the sides are structured that way as well. So it's not like you can like leave the opening, like you can't fold it over, right? So that's another reason why I didn't pull the trigger on this bag, why I'm not sure if I will ever be able to pull the trigger on a watercolor speedy. Um, all the other styles that the watercolor canvas came in, I wasn't a huge fan of, um, at least not in this point in my life. So right now that watercolor canvas is still a dream to me and I'll still be thinking about it and I'll still check up on it um, every couple months to see if that's something that I can add to my collection. So then the third bag, which is a current dream bag of mine, is this Chanel flat bag, which I saw on the website. I was just scrolling through the Chanel website one night and I saw this bag and I was like, oh my God, it's gorgeous. It's made out of a black tweed. Um, so I thought that was an interesting twist and it was also a single flap. So that single flap makes the capacity of the bag much bigger. So I actually went into my local Chanel boutique and I asked them if they had this bag, you know, I was like, it is it in the current collection? You know, it's currently on the website. So the sales associate was super helpful and she was like, let me take a look. I'm pretty sure I don't have that bag, but maybe we can locate it for you. So she actually pulled out a binder of all the current like fall styles that they were expecting. So she was explaining how, you know, some of the fall styles haven't been shipped out yet, but some of them are in transit. So why don't you take a look through this binder to see, you know, if we can locate this bag. So I actually, you know, started flipping through the binder and it turns out that in all of North America, in both US and Canada, there's only going to be six of these bags sent to New York. So she was like, yeah, a bag with that such small quantity, it must be like a really special order bag. So I don't know why they listed it on the website because that kind of just like raises people's expectations and hopes up like mine. But then if they're making such few quantities, then it's like, what's the point um, if they're only going to sell six of these in the entire US and Canada? Um, I, I don't know. It just seemed kind of silly to me. And the binder didn't even list like which stores, like um, whether it was their 57th Street location or like one of their other boutiques. So it just said six in New York and that was it. Like all of the other locations, all of the other states were completely blank. So it's interesting to know, first of all, that, you know, they have this binder and that's how they keep track of what styles they're getting. Um, but also just knowing that I'm probably not going to get my hands on this bag. You know, at this point with the Chanel prices, I feel like every single Chanel bag is a dream bag that, you know, you really have to want it a lot in order to invest that kind of money in it. And, you know, knowing that it's tweed and, you know, tweed doesn't wear as well over time like leather does. Um, I just don't think I want to spend that energy tracking it down, you know, going to New York, asking every boutique, calling around. Um, but it's definitely a gorgeous bag. And if I could have it in my collection, I definitely would. Now, dream bag number four is actually also another bag from Chanel. And first of all, I've always wanted a pink Chanel bag. So, you know, now that I have my neutral colors and my classic colors pretty much done, um, I've always imagined having like a light pink. But at the same time, I think pink is a little bit impractical for me because first of all, it is a lighter color. So, you know, there might be color transfer. It just takes a little bit more care. 
And second of all, it is hard for me to pair pink with outfits. Um, just again, because I don't spend that much time thinking about putting together a perfect outfit. I just like to throw something on and have it look good and walk out the door. And I just feel like I won't be able to do that with a pink bag, whether it's light pink or bright pink or dark pink. Um, it's just a color that's difficult for me to match and pair stuff with, you know, unless I'm wearing a pink shirt. But the dream bag that I am specifically thinking about is from their like iridescent pink collection that I think they did quite a few years ago. So it's not from like the iridescent colors that they did just this past year. It's like a chevron pink and I know Chase Amy has one in their small flap bag. And then I've seen a wallet on a chain actually with this iridescent pink material, but it's going way, way above retail pricing just because it is, I think, a pretty coveted um, material and color. So that's why they're so rare all on the secondhand market. And also when they do show up, they're quite expensive. You know, I'm not sure I'm willing to spend um, like $4,000 on a walk, even though it is on my, you know, dream bag list. Um, so that's where it's staying right now, just as a dream and not reality. Okay, so now my fifth and final dream bag would be a Dior bag with their oblique embroidery or one of their other embroidered bags. So the reason why I think this is a dream and I would love to have one in my collection is because even though I'm not like the biggest like Dior brand fan, I definitely admire craftsmanship when it is due. And for the Dior embroidery, that is absolutely true. You know, you can definitely tell um, that some artisan spent a lot of time creating these beautiful bag creations, you know, whether it's their oblique Dior repeated, the tiger that's embroidered on the book totes. I think those are definitely works of art. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I would be so worried about getting that dirty and because I see them as works of art, I would be worried about taking that out and actually putting things in it. Um, so I would want to just display that and, you know, admire it from there. But again, that's like so impractical. I feel like for bags, you should have the enjoyment of you of using it. So that's why, um, it's on my dream bag list, you know, if I ever get to a point in my life where I have more than enough money to just buy a Dior bag as a display piece, that's probably what I would spend it on. But at this point in time, that's not feasible. So it's a bag that I can admire from afar. So that's it for today's tag video. Please let me know what you thought in the comments, you know, if you agreed or disagreed with any of my picks or please feel free to share your five ultimate luxury dream bags as well. I'm gonna tag a couple other YouTube ladies down in the description, so make sure to check there, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.